Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zang here, and I'm finally back with another YouTube video for you all. Now, life has been super busy recently with, obviously, my internship that I've previously mentioned, and I was at VGC Nationals last weekend. That was a really, really fun experience. I obviously did not do as well as I would have liked. My goal was to make it to day two and try to play on stream for you guys, but unfortunately, a mix of, you know, suboptimal playing and my team kind of pooping out on me ended up... Uh, so I only finished 5-4 in the tournament. Obviously, in the last three years, I needed to perform at Nationals to make it to Worlds. This year, I already had my invite to Worlds, so I didn't really need to do well, but still would have liked to. Uh, but I'll be doing a tournament report. I'll be uploading vlogs that I had while I was up there uh, and a team summary, just so you guys, you know, uh, know exactly what happened, what I used, and what went right, what went wrong, etc. So definitely stay tuned for that. I have a lot of free time this weekend, so I'll be trying to produce as much content as I can just because the weekdays are super hectic, and I am preparing for Worlds now uh, really seriously as well. Uh, also, before I get started with today's video, huge shout out to Alex, also known as Pokemon Academy, uh, for winning the entire competition. He's actually another fellow VGC YouTuber, has really high content, quality content. Overall, great guy too. I hung out with him a lot at Nationals, and it was a pleasure being around him. And it was really, I was really happy to see him win. He's a really deserving player, and it's you know about time he got that big win in the spotlight. So if you don't follow him on YouTube, definitely check him out. I'll link his channel in the description below. But anyway, finally, let's get to this battle. So. You know, while I was playing the Junior National Challenge, which I ended up doing pretty well in, like 3rd in the US, 4th in North America, 18th in the world, uh, I kept my team hidden because, indeed, I did end up bringing this team to Nationals. Now I can finally upload the videos that, uh, you know, I had from the game because I had a lot of really good games from the tournament. Uh, and I'll show you why I ended up bringing this team to Nationals because it performed really well in the Junior International Challenge. And like I said, I'll be doing a team report on this soon, so stay tuned. The two, two Pokemon that you do not see that I also brought were Rotom Wash and Gengar. But finally, let's get into this battle. So you see the four Pokemon I have. My opponent has Salamence, Kangaskhan, Rotom Wash, and Aegislash. So without further ado, let's get into this battle. Now, the whole objective of the team was kind of to just beat down my opponent with super effective moves. So, for example, Pyrus Overheat is one of the most powerful attacks in the game. It KOs, you know, common Pokemon like Edgeslash, really one of the most common Pokemon. My choice of Mega, Mega Lucario, was also used to counter, obviously, the most common Mega Pokemon in Kangaskhan. So, the idea was, alright, I have all these super effective hits, let me just try to KO my opponent before they can KO me. So, in this battle that I had in the Jew International, I led with Lucario and Pyra as my opponent leads with Salamence and Kangaskhan. Now, this is a pretty good lead matchup for my opponent because Salamence is most definitely Choice Scarf, meaning he can just get a Fire Blast and KO my Mega Lucario. So, for the first turn, I'm just going to double protect to scout any potential moves. You know, it's most definitely Choice, so I want to see whether it locks itself into a Draco Meteor or Fire Blast or even a Hydro Pump. Uh, it's a pretty safe move. There's not much can go wrong. That can go wrong. Uh, unless, you know, my opponent decides to Mega Evolve with Kangaskhan, Power Up, Punch himself. I realized that was a potential move he could have made, but I said to myself, all right, you know, um, that's a risk I'm willing to take. So I'm going to go double protect here on the first turn just to prevent any damage and to see if Salamence, you know, locks itself into a move. He makes a brilliant play by switching to Rotom Wash and getting the power up punch off. Uh, now this is really bad, that's the one play I did not want to see at all, but by switching to Rotom Wash, he loses momentum, because now Salamence is not in and he can't Fire Blast me, so I actually don't feel too bad about my position. Now this following turn, I expect the Rotom Wash to actually switch back out, and since I saw the Power Up Punch uh, come out from Kangaskhan on the first turn, I said to myself, he's probably carrying Protect on that Kangaskhan, which is getting more common, and I do call it correctly, Kangaskhan does go for the Protect. So this turn, I actually double up, uh, I... Close combat the Rotom slot, knowing that if he doesn't switch it, I'll be able to do a lot of damage. Even if he does, you know, Lucario's close combat with uh, its ability at a adaptability, excuse me, uh, will be really good. And I do get the Hyper Voice off as well. So I double targeted that slot, knowing that uh, with Unnerve, I'd be able to KO the Rotom. So things work out pretty pretty well for me. Now, I do have Boa Punch, so I am able to KO the Salamence, but of course, I am still staring down a plus 2 Kangaskhan. Uh, but I say to myself, alright, Pyro and Lucario are both faster, so I can get the Overheat off. That's going to KO Kangaskhan, and now I'm going to be up 4-3. Uh, He's probably going to pick up a KO on one of my two Pokemon, but then I can just outspeed it with the other and KO it the next turn. I do have Garchomp in the back as well, so that's really good for me. He just goes for the return here onto Pyro. Fortunately, not a Power Up Punch. If he did go for a Power Up Punch, he'd be at plus 4, meaning even Sucker Punch could knock out what I had in the back. So that was good for me. So I bring in my Garchomp now as he brings in his Edge Slash. Also really good for me because Garchomp obviously has a great matchup against both of uh, my opponent's Pokemon. I'm going to switch out to Gardevoir here because Lucario is severely uh, hindered by the minus 2 from the Intimidates and the minus 1 from Close Combat. Just want to switch it out. Uh, you know, I say to myself, even if I lose Gardevoir here, I'm still in a decent position because Garchomp 
uh, pairs pretty well against the Edge of Slash. He goes for the Sucker Punch onto my Garchomp, so I'm really happy to see that because obviously I protected, and he actually double targeted my Garchomp, so free switch in there for me for Gardevoir, and I do trace the Parental Barn with Gardevoir, so that's really, really good. Now, unfortunately, I'm not running Telepathy, so it means that if I do choose the Earthquake with Garchomp, I am going to hit myself, but that's a risk I'm willing to take. He goes for the King Shield and the Protect here with Kangaskhan. Good play just to obviously protect himself from any damage. I did go for just the Dragon Claw and a Shadow Ball into the two Pokemon. I am running Specs Gardevoir, so Shadow Ball plus EQ I knew would be able to KO. This following turn, I knew that my Garchomp could survive. I plus two Sucker Punch from Kangaskhan, so I just went for the EQ. He does not end up going for the Sucker Punch on either of my Pokemon, so I do knock out the Kangaskhan. Shadow Ball here will be able to knock out the Aegislash as well, so... 3-1 lead at this point, and as this last Pokemon is Rotom Wash, I'm basically going to be able to seal up the win. So, you know, Pyro and Lucario were actually really good in just dealing heavy offense, and picking up the knockout on Scarf Salamence was really big earlier on. Uh, even though he had the plus 2 Kangaskhan, uh, because he had Protect, I was able to use that to my advantage, surprisingly, and predict the Protects when it did come out. So, you know, here I double up on the Rotom, obviously, with the Dragon Claw and Shadow Ball. The game's pretty much over, there's not much Rotom can do, obviously, against two heavy offense Pokemon. Uh, I'm gonna miss out on the KO barely, but uh, he's not, like I said, he's not gonna be able to do anything, and I actually avoid his Will-O-Wisp on the last turn, so I am able to pick up the knockout here and win 3-0. Um, you know, that kind of features what my team kind of does, even though the first turn went really poorly for me, by having all these fast, heavy offense Pokemon, I was able to swing momentum back into my favor, and, you know, it was a really good game. Uh, fortunately enough, I was able to prevent the plus two Kangaskhan from really doing too much because that's always something scary to deal with but yeah it's just one of the battles featuring my team I have a ton more from the June International and I have one from National so I'll be uploading all of those in the near future of course if you guys enjoyed the video like uh, comment subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you soon all right peace